Welcome back. My first guest tonight played an amazing medic in Hacksaw Ridge, a spectacular priest in silence. He was also Spider Man. He now stars in Breathe. Please welcome Andrew Garfield. I love that song. What's that song called, John? Give it up for Andrew Garfield. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a hit. All the kids are going to be dancing name. to it. Yeah. 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 Nice to see you again. Hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Back at you. Back at you. My feelings exactly. Yeah. Hey, um, it's always lovely to talk to you, but I do have a bone to pick with you. And oh. I hope you don't mind me publicly bone picking. OK? <laughs> Here we go. You said this, and don't deny it. A few okay. weeks ago, you said in an interview, you said, you're not sure if the world needs movie stars. Ah, yes. Okay. I said that. Who would I then talk to? <laughs> I mean, I can't talk to Neil deGrasse Tyson every night. Oh, I mean, you I could. would love to. Yeah. I would love to. But I, I would like talking to movie stars. Oh. We need people up on the big silver there. Do you think? Oh, yeah. They're your, the dream factory. We need heroes. OK, yeah, OK, fine. <laughs> so, no, but, no, but, 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 no, but why don't we need movie stars? I think what I meant, Stephen Colbert, is um, I think what I meant more was I don't know. Sometimes there's this idealization of people in the public eye, and there's this sure. false um, kind of idealized vision, this like false perfection that I think is projected from people in that position. And I think sometimes it can create. A little bit of uh, dissatisfaction with our own, because I don't consider myself a movie star at all, and I never, but, I never will. Hold on. But Is he a movie star? No. <laughs> it's not for you to say. You don't get to say whether you're a movie star. It's my life, Stephen. You okay? That's fine. That's okay. But that's like saying you're not influential or something like that. It, uh, it's for other people to say okay. whether you're a star or not. All right, but we're all stars, Stephen. Is the point? We're all made. Well, to speaking of Neil deGrasse Tyson, we yes. are all made of stardust. Are we not? <laughs> but I think, I think there's, there's something about this um, projection of perfection, whether it's in, in terms of beauty or in terms of, well, I'm just like this, like, reg I'm just so charismatic. And I'm, but I'm not, I'm, I'm lots of things. We all are human beings are made up of, you know, the light and the dark, the kind of the... Oh, I'm a collection of bad habits. Right, yes, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I, think I, I, I think what I'm saying is sometimes there's a tendency to focus on this p idea of perfection, which I think doesn't allow us, doesn't give us permission to accept our, our whole selves in our entirety, our own beingness. I think it kind of creates this not-enoughness in the culture, where you're constantly looking up to things that aren't actually real, but are pretending to be real, and more perfect than you. That's how I feel when I look at movie stars. All right, you have to... I'm not gonna hit you. I'm not gonna... Come on back, come on back, come on back. I understand what you're saying. Okay. But you've played some, a lot of flawed characters. You were uh, the priest in Silence. Uh, obviously, you were in Hacksaw Ridge. How do you keep... Okay, how do you keep from getting too swamped by the seriousness of the yeah. work? Do you have any? How do you? How does Andrew Garfield lighten it up? <laughs> since the carefree Spider-Man days are behind you. Oh yeah, they were carefree. Um, I, uh, were they not carefree? Oh, let's not get into that, Stephen. <laughs> what? What's wrong, wrong, with, what's wrong with being Spider-Man? No, there's nothing wrong with being Spider-Man. But well, with, they... great, with great power comes great responsibility, Stephen, and that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> it's not just you know. <laughs> You just couldn't handle. You just couldn't rock the tights anymore. Was that uh, it? You don't just don't to, diminish. You just don't to diminish the experience. I don't want don't to. I don't want it. to diminish the Marvel Cinematic Universe in any way. I apologize. <laughs> no, um, but moving on quickly from that, um, I, um, I, uh, you know, what was the question? Oh yeah, I don't about, know. it was about lightness. It was yeah. about lightness. How yes. do you lighten it up? Goodness gracious me! There's a game I like to play oh, with, okay. with my castmates. It's called the game of giddiness and freedom. Now. <laughs> For a, na for, for a game that lightens you up, that sure is a highfalutin name. <laughs> that's, that's the sequel to the Book of Laughter and Forgetting. The, <laughs> the, the, the game of giddiness and freedom? Yeah, I made it Let's up. Let's get giddy and free. You want to play? I'll try, yeah. Let's get giddy and free. We're too serious. 
We're too serious right now. Let's okay. Get okay, let's get Gideon free. free. So the game of Gideon and Freedom is pretty much you say things. You just say things. Sounds like a simple game. It's a really simple game. Anything? Anything. Anything. That's any noun or any, something? No, any words. In, 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 any word? In, in order. And you just, and you, but the, the only rule is you don't think. And, you, okay. and, and then you so get So it's word led. association. Not really, no. Should we, let, let me, let's just begin. Hey, Stephen, you're, hi. My name's Andrew, and you're my friend. Or once were. Shall we go to the, the, the ball and hi, dance? Hi, Andrew. In talking to you is a good opportunity to see a man's eyebrows. And yes, I, yes. What, what, and, the, 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 and the skin on the water and the pool and the music and the yeah. splashing and the smell. And my, my, my friend Fred called you a loser, and I don't think he's right. No, and there are many people, and the this, this Spider-Man was, I didn't, never saw those movies that you were in. But I heard they're very good. That's a good game. That's a game of getting it's a good game. Freedom. I like it. Yeah. That's really, yeah. That's really, and you can go on forever. It's word association confession, though. Is it's it? like a confession. What yeah. Do, what do you mean? Because just things are just burst out of you. Yeah, I, would never, I did not see either of your Spider-Man movies, but I would never <laughs> have said that. I would never have said that if we hadn't played the game, and now I've confessed to you, but in such a Gideon light way. <laughs> That you, can't, you can't be mad at me, because I know how seriously you take those movies. Really no. Okay, now this new movie you have is a serious not, movie. We're not playing the game anymore. Well, that... only we can, <laughs> okay, we can play the game, but that means right. we can't talk about your movie. It's one or the other. <laughs> no, we'll talk about the film. I want to talk about the film. Me too, me too. Because this is a fascinating story. It's called Breathe. It's about a man named Robin Cavendish yeah. and his family. Who was Robin Cavendish, and, and, and what did he do? Not just for himself, but for, for yeah. millions of people around the world. Yeah, it's remarkable. He, he was, um, oh, God, how do I even start? I'll try, because um, I'm here. He was so an Englishman. I'm, he was English, thank yes. you. Um, no, but he's a wonderful man. He, um, he was uh, this very charming, charmed athlete, captain in the army back in the 50s. He, he met this wonderful woman, Diana. They got married very quickly, fell in love very quickly. They went to Kenya. They, he was a tea broker. And then at the age of 28, he um, got hit with the polio virus, and he was paralyzed from the neck down um, for the rest of his life. And it was, of course, a major blow. And uh, he was uh, very depressed for about three years and suicidal for, 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 for a part of it. Didn't really understand what his value was anymore, what his purpose or you know, meaning in, in being in the world was anymore. Um, but it was with the love of his wife, this amazing woman who's still with us, Diana Cavendish, and his incredible group of friends that he managed to refine that spark and longing for life. And he, um, he was the first person who was on it. He, um, he had to live on a ventilator, on an external ventilator respirator machine that breathed for him because he wasn't able to do it for himself anymore. What they used to call the iron lung. Exactly, yeah. But he was actually on a ventilator, whereas lots of other people were on the iron lung. Um, he was the first person on, a, on any form of external ventilation who decided to leave hospital and live at home. Uh, it, he was the first respinaut, which I think is a really nice word. Respinaut? Re as an astronaut, but... On a respirator. On a respirator, but someone leaving the confines of the hospital. It was considered a death sentence. It was, it was that terrifying. So he was this daring, pioneering, adventurous man that decided, if I'm going to be here, I'm going to live. I'm, I, I want to be at home with my wife, and I want to see my, my son, you know, grow up. And well, we have a clip here of, yeah. of uh, you as Robin Cavendish and his wife and his son. Yeah. What's happening in this scene? Oh, yeah, I think, I think this, in this scene, we're, we're, um, I think this is a, a moment where Robin is um, dreaming about going further. There's, uh, he was always longing to go further and further and further and not let this limitation be that a limitation. Jim? We're so lucky. Yes, we were. Can we go to Africa one day, Daddy? Heavy, yeah. but it's not heavy. It's a really light film. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> Breathe is in theaters this Friday. Andrew Garfield, everybody. We'll be right back with Tracy <laughs> Ellman. <laughs>